Hello, welcome to this new webinar. Uh, this webinar is focused in finite element applications for concrete structural analysis and design. My name is Roman Martin and I'm hosting this webinar. Well, this webinar summary is related to finite element capabilities focused in concrete structural analysis and design. And mainly these capabilities are divided into different groups. Code design, design following a code specification for bin and cell uh, elements. And also we will focus on uh, nonlinear analysis and it, its application for concrete structures. And also uh, we will give some recommendations and good practices when you are uh, generating some models and obtaining different uh, results. Uh, this webinar is included in in a big group of, of webinars, that uh, free webinars that we, we give about different topics, um, not only concrete, also steel, structure, geotechnics, and, and many other models uh, inside the civil, uh, civil branch. Also, uh, about concrete design, uh, we will give a, a free master class in September, and we have a lot of trainings and courses, and some of them are um, some new trainings that we, we will have uh, since uh, October are focused in, um, in concrete structural design. Uh, the examples we are going to show are uh, extracted from those trainings. Also, you have the options of practice with uh, Civil Fem Power by, by Mark, that is the software uh, that we have used to uh, do these examples. Uh, so you can also practice and get a trial um, and already a conditional license. Uh, where to practice uh, for free. Well, about that training uh, that we have extracted uh, these examples, uh, those, those courses that start in October are, um, are divided into three, three different groups, three, three courses. One is focusing on reinforced concrete structures. Um, it is about modeling recommendations, uh, limited state design, codes and standards, and also the, uh, the essentials of nonlinear uh, nonlinear concrete material model for um, concrete structural designs. The second course uh, is about pre-stress concrete and advanced simulations. Uh, about those advanced simulations, we are added also a stage construction process where uh, our uh, material properties are time dependent, uh, creep and sink rates or fiber con reinforced concrete, and also um, pre-stress concrete. And the last, the last training, the last course, is about thermal structural copel analysis. Some examples that can be, can be seen and analyzed with this is the early edge concrete uh, and analyzing the, um, the heat due to the, the curing of concrete and also fire analysis or solar radiation. These are some three main examples. Well, um, also this you can practice with Civil Fem Power by Mark, that is a general purpose civil, enge civil engineering software. Uh, with, with has a lot of uh, advanced uh, analysis capabilities and also, of course, code checking and design for steel and concrete structures. The solver is, is Mark, uh, which belongs to Hexagon uh, MSC software, and it's one of the most powerful nonlinear softwares. And also, Civil Fem applies a lot of capabilities for uh, civil and structural and geotechnical engineering. Some of these um, capabilities are uh, uh, code. Uh, ultimate limit state or serviability limit state uh, design, uh, tools for pre-stress concrete and geotechnics, and also uh, advanced uh, nonlinear simulations and multi-physics analysis like CPH structural or thermal uh, structural couple analysis. Well, um, just focusing the, in this webinar, um, we are going to see uh, several, several examples, several models. Uh, were to explain some of these applications of, of advanced nonlinear uh, finite element analysis for a concrete uh, structure design. Uh, well, um, we are dividing these, these examples in three different groups, reinforced concrete, pre-stress concrete, and thermal structural copel analysis. We are following the, the, course, um, the courses that uh, are starting in October and where we have extracted these examples. Uh, in that, we will give some uh, some guidelines and, and some some tips in this webinar, but you can increase your, uh, your the, the details and the information with those trainings and master classes we will have since September. Well, started with uh, reinforced concrete uh, as an introduction, uh, codes and standards specified to different main regions, uh, B regions, the B regions, and D 
uh, discontinuous regions. Uh, in bit regions that are most of the structure um, is where uh, Navier hypotheses are fulfilled. It means that you have um, a planar strain for the clock session uh, when it is uh, deformed. And uh, you can apply a um, typical code design uh, formulation uh, using the Teresin diagram for ultimate limit state axia plus bending, and also some formulation for shear and torsion, and of course, cracking checking. But for these regions where this hypothesis cannot be applied, the typical design method would be using strat and time method. There is a force equilibrium inside, inside the, the concrete and um, calculating um, tension forces that are the dies, uh, calculating um, the reinforcement amount in those zones and strat, which is the compression uh, part, is for concrete and it is used to design and calculate concrete part. Well, that is, uh, that's, that is very useful, but uh, we will see how nonlinear analysis is improving this, uh, this calculation of some of it. Um, the first example we are seeing is a corbel design. Um, you can follow many, many ways to, to design this type of structures, but uh, well, first, if you perform uh, elastic linear analysis uh, with, um, just, uh, with concrete material properties, and then you plot um, principal stresses. Uh, first, uh, principal stresses, the maximum and the minimum. Uh, you will obtain for the minimum principal stress, that is the compression. You can uh, plot in arrows. You can see um, where the compression, uh, the, the path of the compression. So you can define in uh, this, this way where uh, threads are and um, for the strat and tie method and uh, plotting uh, the the maximum principal stress, which is uh, tension, you will identify also where to place the, the ties, uh, where to place the reinforcement, and you can start doing a first uh, pre-design just with uh, linear elastic material behavior and plotting uh, principal stresses through arrows. And then you can improve your model, uh, adding uh, reinforcement amount inside, non-linear material behavior for concrete with cracking uh, properties, and then apply a, a load. Uh, with this load that is increased, you can obtain the Corvel capacity curve. This is the force uh, load applied on this, this size versus a vertical displacement of this corner. And you can identify very easy the failure load, which is here about uh, 50 kilonewtons, uh, where failure happens and plot uh, cracking values, jailing uh, for steel. And you can improve the, the model uh, adding, uh, increasing the, the reinforcing steel or, or any other part. This method has many advantages uh, from the strata type model. Uh, you can obtain, in example, the capacity curve and many other details that you cannot obtain uh, from the strata type model. Well, uh, going to the next example, uh, we are going to see the arc bridge uh, model. Uh, most of the model is um, correspond to B regions, so we can apply uh, the limit state uh, design that is uh, focusing code design. And um, in most of the of the model, uh, um, we can apply uh, this this limit state design because linear uh, section stress are fulfilled in in the in the sections. So uh, um, even if we can apply um, this code checking and these field regions, there are many. Um, many non-linearities that could be applied or must be applied to the model just for having the right and accuracy results. Uh, one of them for this arc bridge is the state construction, that is time-dependent material properties. Because uh, in this case, for this type of structures, um, the most unfavorable situation could be during the construction, uh, the construction process, because the arc uh, is, is uh, before the, uh, the, arc, the arc is done, we have two, dif two different canty levels where maximum bending moments. Also, it is very important for these models, the support conditions. It's uh, quite different if you add um, completely connected, um, 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 co completely connected uh, behavior between beams and shells for the support, or it is only pin connection, or you have to add uh, um, some uh, behavior through uh, different springs. 
also the mesh density it is important and during the construction process uh, the cables with uh, sequential press stressing so well here is the model the, this model is generated with shells and beams and as i said the most important part of this is the construction process so with civil film the way to do this construction process is um, adding a calendar time in this calendar time we define different uh, materials that correspond to the different construction uh, uh, parts of the models and it is uh, the way to define this calendar time is the activation time so we indicate the activation time for every part of the model and um, civil film automatically uh, define uh, which is the stress strain diagram considering the uh, active time when we are solving the time we are solving and the, uh, the uh, activation time for this material so if, um, activates or deactivates elements considering the activation time and also select a stress strain diagram depends on the material age first uh, what we do is um, defining the construction process here we have uh, up to 18 phases and we can plot one by one which is the construction process first for sizes generated then we start with the arc construction this way just advancing a little bit this is the last part of the arc construction after the arc is closed we remove this tower and the cables and then we start the deck construction until the end well, with civil film, um, we can solve all this construction process with a very detailed analysis, considering uh, material time properties, uh, not only the 28 material properties, but also uh, the specific uh, day properties. It is, it is uh, the age of the concrete is below the 28 days. So not only for solving, but also for design. So this is very important because the most unfavorable situation could be during the construction process and also with con concrete age which is uh, below 28 days if you, uh, the construction is is faster so uh, this is very important for uh, a right uh, analysis also support conditions as i said depends on the, on the how it is uh, it will be built the behavior of the connection between um, the columns and the, and the deck uh, so with civil film, well, what we can create is connections that we give a behavior for uh, the different, the, the six degrees of freedom, displacements and uh, rotationals, and we give a stiffness for every of those degrees of freedom. So we can perform a really detailed analysis of the connection for, for both. And after this, after solving all the, um, all the phases of the staged uh, construction, then we can apply on, on the deck um, on the model all the different loads and perform a code checking uh, and design this code checking will be based on forces and moments uh, are considering linear um, stress distribution in the cross section and calculate reinforcement amount cracking checking shear and torsion and gives uh, as an output all the um, uh, reinforce um, details and, and for the correct design for fulfilling the, the code specifications Well, here we have a plot of reinforcement amount as, that we have and also um, very important for the cables, sequential press stressing. In those cables, we have to consider um, different press stressing loads uh, during the construction process to keep the, the arc following the, the right layout of the model. So we have to apply sequential press stressing. So, well, even if this is a uh, linear section stress model that is a load linear stress because it fulfills a uh, hypothesis uh, we have to consider many uh, modeling nonlinear situations well uh, next ex example is uh, nonlinear reinforced concrete beams um, in this example uh, we will see the, the need, needed uh, um, uh, setup for the concrete li uh, nonlinear properties and well, with this nonlinear uh, material model, these nonlinear models, uh, what we can obtain uh, is 
a part of uh, designing the deep regions, also we can design the rest of the model and obtain much more information. For example, uh, if the failure will be uh, brittle or ductile, and we can improve the design with this type of nonlinear analysis where we ha will have a very accuracy results um, just with displacement uh, versus loads, uh, cracking information, also um, what happens, the behavior of loads over the design loads, and we can obtain many information. We are going to see three different uh, bin reinforcement configuration, and we will see the, um, the different results we obtain from them. Well, first, the nonlinear reinforced concrete uh, beam input. The basic um, design, the basic input for the uh, for the nonlinear concrete material model, described in this this picture. First, we have elastic behavior for compression after going over uh, a determined stress. We'll have a compression hardening. And this compression hardening uh, will finish with a allowable strain. This is the crushing strain. So when we reach this strain, the element will failure. It will have um, a brittle failure due to the compression crushing. For um, for tension, we'll have a linear elastic behavior until a um, cracking stress. After this cracking stress, we can define three different behaviors. That is brittle elastic. That is suddenly failure. This is more um, for, um, plain, for plain concrete, concrete masses. We have also the behavior of giving a softening modulus, which will be um, a linear uh, softening. Or also we can define a multilinear um, behavior for this softening. Uh, there are a um, lot of information at codes and standards about uh, the, the recommended big, uh, data for this uh, this obtaining modulus and this obtaining values, and um, for for bending bending crack, uh, cracks and bending, bending failure, this input is very important. So well, it's um, uh, it is um, the results depends a lot on this uh, this input data. And the other important um, setup with that we have to do is the shear retention factor. The shear retention factor is the shear stiffness uh, that we have. In a, in a cracked element. That is the shear uh, transmission from one side to, to the other through the crack. And it starts this shear tension factor, it starts being one. When uh, crack, crack width is zero, it means there are fully transmission of shear through the cracks. And it is reduced, um, this depends on the crack width, and it is reduced, this value, until zero. Zero means there are no shear transmission through the crack and failure uh, will occur if that crack, crack uh, just uh, cut the, completely the model. So um, CR cracks and CR failure depends a lot of this, on, on these values. So it is very important to, uh, to do the correct input for these two values. And well, just uh, after explaining this, uh, we will do, uh, see three different models. The first one is under reinforced uh, beam. In this under reinforced beam, uh, we have um, not enough bending reinforcement, so we apply a load, and uh, the failure happens due to, uh, to uh, concrete uh, uh, bending cracks, uh, reinforcing gelling, and uh, the failure of the model. So if we see the, this example, here you can see for the concrete, the input data we have done is uh, critical uh, cracking is here, it is this one. Then for a uh, softening modulus, we have added this, these values. So after cracking, this will be the softening modulus until um, complete failure of this, uh, there is no stiffness for, for uh, tension uh, through this crack when we have a strain of 0 0.01. And uh, for shear, shear retention factor, it is similar, we have this bilinear uh, behavior with uh, no shear uh, stiffness when we reach 0 0.011 uh, uh, crack strain. Well, after this, we apply uh, a load located at two points until a uh, failure. So, well, if we plot an example um, maximum principal crack strain.
this is the last step. We can see here the, the cracks in the model. And also, well, um, without deformed shape, and this is the deformed shape. And also, if we plot um, the reverse, And we plot the equivalent plastic strain. We can see here that we have shielding on the, these points, and well, um, these parts correspond to concrete cracks. And well, the plot could be uh, on the on the element thickness or also this uh, type of results that I can plot. That is the graphic one. So we can see that shielding is happening. Uh, in reinforcement and for the failure. And also we can plot um, vertical force versus um, a displacement for historic results. So here we can see that we have a first uh, linear elastic behavior. Here cracks start. So uh, we have cracked section, which is um, the stiffness is lower. So we have a different um, uh, branch that follows until jailing starts at this point and after that uh, we have a plastic branch until failure happens so with this um, this models this nonlinear model we can determine uh, not only um, we can have accurate values for um, for uh, load versus uh, displacements also we can study the, the cracking point the starting jailing point also we have we have um, ductile behavior, so we can obtain a lot of information about these nonlinear models. This could be very useful for research or um, um, forensic engineering. Well, now in the same model, what we have done is increase the, um, the bending reinforcement from the previous one, which um, um, smaller uh, diameter, we have increased the, the, the reinforcing diameter and solve again. Now the failure happens, uh, crack, uh, cracks are lower and failure happens due to concrete compression. So well, uh, for this situation, as um, we can see the load versus displacement curve and we can see that now we have a much uh, brittle behavior uh, because well, uh, crushing in concrete is, is brittle. Uh, it's not like uh, yelling on, on steel, that it's uh, more tip ductile. So also, uh, if we analyze the model, we can see this is the model. Uh, we have modified um, the reinforcement. Now we have a higher diameter. And now, if we plot crack strain, the model, well, if we plot um, equivalent plastic strain, that is the the, the compression, um, uh, the compression um, mm, jailing, and if we plot that value, we can see that we have a big um, zone where uh, compression goes over the limit and crushing is happening. This crushing, uh, crushing value is defined in the material properties concrete and here we can see that crushing uh, strain is uh, 0.35% so when the, the material reaches this value this strain uh, failure happens uh, this is the reason of the failure of this of this model and as we have seen um, just that is a brittle behavior and for the next model is the CR failure one we have removed the CR reinforcement and we have applied a load. And now this crack is developed. Here we can see the CR cracks. It starts with uh, bending cracks and then CR crack is developed and failure happens. This is the force versus displacement, displacement, displacement lo uh, load. Here we have the sudden um, failure due to CR and there's a small branch with a lower um, value and uh, for this branch uh, as there is a failure of concrete, um, just uh, the, the structure is, is whole, but the, um, but the reinforcing uh, 
uh, for the steel, but there is also jailing for bending and uh, finally complete uh, failure of the of the model. So just seeing the last example, this is this is the one, um, and as you can see here, we have removed completely all the reinforcing. We have only we have only two bars for uh, at the bottom, and for the concrete we have the same the same material model. And if we plot um, cracking the last step, we can see the crack failure here. And well, uh, with, we can we can see that with three, uh, three different reinforcing con uh, configurations, we can obtain a very different behavior. And uh, also, the, for the force versus displacement values, uh, we can obtain different uh, uh, brittle uh, ductile behavior depending on reinforced configuration. And well, if we see the video of this of these three models together. Here we have bending, uh, compression, uh, concrete, and CR failure. And we can see that we can compare the three values and the three beams and analyze two results. Well, uh, another example is a beam column connection. Uh, this is a D region. And um, in this model, what we have done is apply incremental cycling loads on the bottom of this beam connection and we are trying to analyze for those cycling loads the damage that happens on every cycling and the final um, the final behavior uh, for the collapse of this connection this incremental cycling loads on the on the column to see the behavior is uh, very useful for um, seismic design of these structures so if we see the video for the, we can see here crackings are happening and in the steel part jailing also is happening so well, with these um, detailed models, we can design these regions and also obtain much more information um, from, for, uh, from the structures we are designing, such as uh, ductile behavior. Well, the next, uh, the next group of examples is um, correspond to the second course, and it is focusing on stress concrete and also advanced nonlinear analysis. Uh, up to now, we have seen the basics of nonlinear analysis, the essentials, and we will see uh, some more um, um, complicated and, um, examples. Also, we are seeing two different methods uh, for uh, the pre-stressing tendons, how to model it. A first method will be um, applying equivalent uh, pre-stressing loads. And a second method will be modeling um, modeling the tendons. Well, the first uh, the first method is for this uh, natural liquid gas tank. In this model, this is cell model. We will ap apply static and thermal loads. And um, for pre-stress uh, concrete, um, we will define tendon layout through through lines. Uh, those lines uh, will be um, captured of tendons. Apply those properties. And we see of them, we calculate automatically long and short term loads. Uh, with these long and short term loads, see of them calculate equivalent pre-stressing loads, which are applied to the model. The advantages of this, mo of this method with equivalent pre-stressing loads is that uh, we can combine those loads with other loads in an easy way. We can solve the model um, and combine those results and perform code checking and design for bending and glacier or cracking. So, well, if we see the model, which is the next one, this here we can see it is a cell model. And for tendons, we have used this is the, the areas and lines. And uh, for these areas, uh, we have messed it with, with concrete, given, uh, and we have given different thickness for the different parts. We have practiced uh, uh, here these zones and the roof and well these lines circumferential and vertical lines that are um, are used for defining the tendons there are uh, three different families one family is a circumferential tendons that, uh, that is half of the uh, of the circle and there are two different groups one for one side and the other for the other and then they are turning uh, uh, 90 degrees and the other family goes one goes from this half and the other goes for the other half and the vertical tendons 
So well, um, for this, these tendons, here we have the information. We capture those lines, and on every of those lines, we apply the pre-stressing loads, casting diameter, uh, and different uh, different tables to calculate the long-term and short-term short -term loads. This is on, on, on losses, pre-stressing losses and uh, them will apply equivalent loads. If we want to see those equivalent loads, we can plot, for, for example, some of these. Uh, some of these, uh, these are circumferential um, loads, circumferential uh, tendons, and we can see how these tendons will apply these loads at both ends of, of the um, of the tendons and also intermediate loads in all the tendon layout of this co of, of the concrete. So we'll, this will be this family tendon groups, and these are the equivalent loads that are, are applied. So as I said, this is very easy to, to apply these loads and combine, and to uh, to calculate reinforcement amount uh, based, based on uh, forces and moment of tension for the cell model. And here we have some results of cracking, cracking results, cracking checking on this model. And the next example is more focused in the tailit analysis and non-linear analysis and modeling the tendons. So the model will be based on solid elements, um, solid elements for concrete, trusses elements for rebars, and also tendons modeled with a rebar a pre-stress um, pre trust element. Um, cable element, sorry. Um, the nonlinear um, behavior, a part of cracking, is the stage construction. So material ages is, will be important because this is a precast beam. So first tendons are defining them. Uh, concrete is activated, and uh, after several days, uh, just the tendons are released. So tendon loads are applied to the model. And then uh, the construction process adding a compression slab on top and some some loads. And in this case, uh, we will perform a part of the cracking uh, behavior. We will apply uh, a stage construction and creep analysis. If we see the model, here is the, the model, the beam. And here, this is the stage process. First, uh, we are defining the concrete, is steel, and the slab. Uh, this is the precast condition. Next step. Next step, we apply the tendons. Tendons are activated. Here we can see the tendons. The difference between the first and the one as are, is that tendons are not applied. And, um, and the last part is the clip analysis. So we are resolving the model. Well, uh, first is when we placed um, we placed the um, the beam over the supports at the print location, and next step is when we add the compression slab. Well, the way to define this creep is activating in the material. In the material, at the creep and sink rates, here we have the cracking properties. And for creep and sink rates, we activate the creep, the step by step creep, uh, creep behavior, and with different creep coefficients that are obtaining from the euro code. So what we do is solve the model for different uh, ages. These are the days 28, 40, 60, 100, 150. Uh, and so uh, the model is solved for these different agencies and a creep is calculated in the model. So well, uh, as pre-stressing loads are higher than uh, self weight and vertical loads, there are a small uh, uplifting of the model. So if we plot, in example, displacement and vertical loads, vertical displacement, sorry, for uh, the last uh, step, we can see that we have uh, a small vertical displacement 
that is in millimeters we can see here it's about one, one millimeter and uh, there are much compression in this zone and um, due to this compression we get um, a creep strain on those zones we can plot it so first we can plot uh, on concrete at the bottom we can plot the uh, total strains and creep strains this is the creep strain and the total strain first we have the elastic strain and then that strain is increased due to creep and the total strain of course is, 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 is increased and um, for um, uh, this is this is the strain for stresses those elements also have a, having the same stress is reduced due to the to, to, to the to the strain and at the steel part that um, uh, that compression uh, on concrete generates a stress increase uh, stress increasing on steel so we can see that depends on the on the part of the model this is the top the top um, tendons so uh, there are less compression um, it is mainly under tension or, or really low compression loads so there are um, small creep strains and small loses on the tendon loads uh, due to creep instead in the bottom and uh, the bottom tendons there are higher loses first due to the elastic strain which is higher at bottom and then higher losses due to creep so with this detailed model we can obtain um, the evolution of the model due to creep and we could analyze other nonlinearities like sink rates, elastic deformation and we can have very detailed information of these models so well if we uh, see the results this is the compression st st stress of the model the horizontal compression strain we can see this in green is under compression and um, these are the, the values we have plot con concrete strain total and creep and uh, compression um, compression stress that is increased in this part and uh, the same as tendon stresses as we saw before that is uh, due to creep tendons uh, we have uh, tendon losses and tendon stresses reduced well another ex example this is about sink rates is a pavement this is um this model is generated with uh, shell elements for the slab and these cell elements we apply sink rates uh, sink rates is higher on top than in bottom of this slab so we have a variable um, strain of the section this is the variables um, um, this variable uh, values generates um, not only um, let's say a horizontal uh, sink rates but also it generates like a deflection uh, this is generating uh, a gap and uplifting of the at the corners uh, due to this variable uh, sink rates on the sec on the cross section and this will generate cracks on top of the um, of the pavement so uh, uh, this nonlinear uh, applications for this uh, this this, is this pavement uh, considering sink rates which is very important uh, we can um, we can analyze uh, crack information on, on top of this pavement with this uh, sync rates analysis and this evolution for time. So this is another application for nonlinear analysis for um, finite element uh, method. And the last part of the um, of the of these examples we are seeing are related to thermal structural couple analysis. First, uh, we are going to see a wind turbine foundation. This is the more complex example we are going to see today. Um, uh, for the concrete, uh, we use solid elements. Uh, for the reverse, uh, this is just a part of the reverse, the, the CR, CR uh, reinforcement and also reinforcement around, uh, about, uh, around bolts and uh, we are using thrust elements and also for, uh, we are using, uh, for the bolts we are all also using uh, trusses but these bolts are pre-stressed with two different rings, top and bottom, that connects these, these bolts and the, the non-linear uh, uh, non-linear uh, concrete material model that we are using is um, just the, the essentials of, of this model that is considering only cracking and crushing we are not considering creeps and crates or other non-linearities but we are analyzing the crack risks uh, of this model due to the temperatures so well here is the results during this analysis 
uh, we are obtaining, obtaining temperature in bottom, middle, and top of this this cross section, and this is the evolution of the uh, of the temperature. Also, we can have the evolution of, of stresses and see if there are cracking risk on this on this model, and we have to uh, to add um, well to divide in a sequential stage for the construction to avoid the um, temperature uh, crack, uh, cracking risk. So if we see the model, uh, this is the result we, that we were plotting. This is the temperature in one of the steps that we have solved. Um, I can clear those values. And if I plot the full model, this is the concrete part that we have seen. We can hide it. Here we have all the all the reinforcing. I'm going to plot it with thickness. Well, this is a very uh, heavy model. It has more than uh, uh, 600,000 elements, and of course, the all are non-linear, uh, considering gel and steel on concrete, uh, cracking, crushing, and also thermal structural couple analysis. We can see we have several group of reinforcing, uh, um, bottom, top reinforcing, um, and what I'm going to plot them apart. Um, an example is here reinforcing. These are the this here ones. We can also plot an example the bolts. This is this part is the center with the, the reinforcing for the bolts, and I'm going to put the bolts, the press stressing bolts. There are two lines, and uh, well, there are also um, two steel rings that are connecting both, and on. There is a connection between these bolts and the ring through. Uh, I'm going to plot to plot it. Through these connections that are constraining uh, displacements. So, uh, well, as you can see, this is a very detailed model where we perform um, perform thermal structural analysis to calculate the crack risk. But not only that, we also perform um, um, we can perform here any sort of analysis, increasing loads to see the failure, cracking, or any other data. But well, now we are focusing only in the um, in the uh, thermal structural analysis. So we are going to explain a little bit the boundary conditions that we have used. So well, first for concrete, we have used the flux on, on volume. We have defined in the concrete. Uh, this volumetric flux table that uh, has uh, these values starting uh, from kilocalories uh, in 140 and it is reduced after 120 days just the heat due to the concrete um, uh, curing is almost zero and this is the temperature that is uh, um, created by the concrete during the curing so we analysis, those thermal structural couple analysis, and these are the temperatures that we obtain that we uh, reach higher temperature after 120 days, and uh, we analyze the, the cracking risk. And the last ex example we are going to see is the concrete beam fire analysis. This model is increasing the complex of the material behavior because now we have temperature-dependent material properties. Um, in this case, not only for the thermal 
uh, thermal properties, the thermal, uh, thermal uh, conductivity and the specific heat that are temperature dependence, would they follow this table, but also the, um, the structural um, properties. This is the stress strain uh, um, for, con for compression for concrete for different temperatures. There's a softening on the model. And uh, we are applying in this case the Euro code uh, 2 and 3 for material properties. Uh, well, this is for compression, but also for cracking and uh, elasticity models. All the properties are uh, temperature dependent properties. And we apply thermal actions in case of fire that is defined by the Eurocode 1, the, the parabolic law of temperatures on, around the, um, the section. And these are the results we obtain. Here we have the temperature, uh, the, tem the thermal analysis, where the temperature uh, just uh, increasing in the core of the, of the section. And due to the softening, concrete and steel uh, uh, failure happens af after. Uh, uh, 218 minutes. That is the target of this of this model. So we can see that due to temperature, jailing start happening on steel, cracking on concrete, and the final failure of the model. Well, those properties can be defined. I'm going to use this this model uh, at concrete. Here we can define in the behavior. It could be linear, short term loss diagram, uh, uh, or also this could be uh, um, uh, uh, properties that depends on the temperature. So if you select that, you will have a temperature material dependent properties. Well, uh, this was the last example uh, we have seen, and just uh, an overview of the on some tips of this model and um, the target of this this webinar, as I said, was showing the applications of uh, finite element analysis for concrete structural design. So mainly these applications are uh, co-designed for these regions that we can design um, um, beams and cells using forces and moments. But also, uh, nonlinear um, concrete adds a lot of applications for in the improvement of the designs. Uh, first, to design the, these regions for core rails, uh, being columns connections, uh, footings, any type of, of these regions can be designed, uh, obtaining much more details than using the classic strata type method, like uh, top tail filter behavior and many others. And uh, after this uh, code checking and nonlinear analysis, we have also very useful uh, thermal structural copier analysis. Uh, first, to analyze the, the cracking risk in early edge concrete masses. Uh, this happens uh, in a lot of concrete structures, like um, um, big foundations, like um, big uh, foundation slabs or uh, wind turbines. Um, well, it also can happen in dams and many other um, civil engineering structures. Also, fire resistance analysis to analyze in detail time before collapse of the structures, and other typical civil engineering applications if is solar radiation. So, well, these are some tips for this um, for this type of analysis and the and the applications that we have with finite element method that can improve a lot our designs and improve our our projects as civil engineers. And well, uh, if you would like to obtain uh, much more information, just uh, uh, we will give more free webinars uh, and master classes. And also, you have the uh, course that start on October. Uh, these courses are mainly three: uh, reinforced concrete structural designs. In this, uh, we applied co-design um, uh, co-designs uh, tips and information. Uh, those co-designs are uh, based on limited state design. Uh, we apply safety factor, load conditions, and perform only limit, ultimate limited state and severity limited state design. This is mainly for beam and cell models. And uh, the nonlinear uh, concrete material model applications, like, uh, uh, well, like designing the regions or, or calculate um, a possible uh, failure, a brittle failure on the sections. Uh, the next course. Uh, will be focused in pre-stress concrete and advanced nonlinear analysis, like stress construction process, uh, creep and sink rates on fiber reinforcing, um, and also uh, well, for pre-stressing, how to define these tendons for uh, given loads, or uh, it's better to uh, model them with uh, pre-stressing trusses. 
And uh, also, well, uh, for thermal structural coping analysis, <coughs> we have three main, three main groups of the course that will have uh, will be at the end of the of the previous ones. That is the the early edge concrete uh, maturing temperature, five resistance analysis, or <coughs> solar solar radiation. Uh, in example, in this in this case, we have a dam. When this dam is empty and we have um, a higher high temperature and solar radiation uh, downstream, cracks uh, downstream can happen uh, due to this this uh, higher uh, stress uh, tension stresses uh, uh, downstream, and when we don't have the water pressure in that. So, well, uh, if you would like to have more information about about this um, about this uh, courses. You can go to, you can visit us. Uh, Cyber is the um, the website for the company. Civilfem is the website for the for the uh, software. But uh, you could, as I said, you could have a trial version or a education version for you to practice and following these trainings. And uh, the trainings are located in this website. And uh, if I open that website. That it's here. You can find course information and this is specific course information for concrete, reinforcing uh, um, advanced analysis and thermal structural. And here, clicking, you have all the information about these trainings, where you can you can in, uh, increase uh, this these uh, recommendations and applications for this uh, finite element method, focusing concrete structural design. Well, uh, thank you very much for uh, for this attention, and uh, we will update and uh, this all these uh, future and incoming uh, events. Yes.